I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm recording on the hottest day of the year. It is 37 degrees outside Celsius. That's 99 degrees Fahrenheit. And while I have been outside a lot of the day and it's perfectly fine to go out and walk around, I don't feel like it. So I'm recording in the office. You can see it's still sunny outside. I don't normally do this, but today there's just that little bit extra heat. I'm going to try to do an episode when it gets a little bit cooler, but I'm at the peak of the day right now and I don't feel like being out there in it. Uh, so we're going to do uh, an inside video today, but we're doing a tourism breakdown. We're doing a uh, take the main cities where you're going to go or main locations where you're going to go for vacation if you're a tourist here in Nicaragua and we're going to give you an idea of how much time you're going to want to spend in each location so you can make better plans around the things that you want to do. We're going to get to that after the bump. I'm filming on the Sony today because I feel like it. I don't use the Sony as much as I use other things. And sometimes it's nice to just do something a little bit different. It gives a different look to the show and it causes me to record a little bit differently because unlike all my other cameras that can run for hours, this one gets you five minutes at a shot. Why Sony? I don't know, but that's what they did. So <laughs> major limitation. They're like vloggers never need to have a full thought at one given time. It's very strange. Okay, so if you're going to be coming to Nicaragua, you've got a couple places that are your major tourist destinations. And everybody wants to know like, well, how much time would you spend? Because if you're going to a Rome or an Athens, you're going to spend one amount of time. And if you're going to, you know, just an interesting little city, you'll probably spend a different amount of time. So same thing's going to happen here, but they may not be the places that you expect. So let's break this down so you can plan your vacation. So Managua, if, if you decide you want to visit Managua, which is a big if, there's lots of reasons why you wouldn't go there. It's a very difficult city to see as a tourist. Like I say in all my videos, it's a great place to live. It's a nice city. I like it. I enjoy going there, but I enjoy going there as a break from the rest of Nicaragua. Uh, and less as a boy, this is a city I would make a point of being a tourist destination. If you're coming to Nicaragua as a tourist, easily you can skip Managua. But if you do decide to check it out, and especially if you're thinking about moving or just playing around with the idea, you're going to want a little bit of information about it, so that's fine. Managua is really going to be just a two-day thing, probably spending one night there. And this works because it's really close to a lot of the other destinations that you're going to want to go to. So it's not really a problem that you're going to spend some time in Managua uh, because, you know, you can spend like an entire day and then zip off to your next destination, probably Granada or Masaya or Laguna de Apoyo, all within less than an hour's reach. So, so that works out pretty well. In Managua, you're probably going to want to see the Zona Ippo. This is the, uh, the, the red light district, the big party district in Los Robles. Um, you want to go out there. If you just want to not experience it, but you want to be aware of it, you would go out during the day. It's very chill. There's no one there during the day. But if you actually want to experience it, you go out late at night, get there between 10 and 11 o'clock at night, plan to stay out till two to three, maybe four and <laughs> dancing, drinking. It is a wild place. Even on like a Monday or Tuesday, you're going to have quite a bit of activity. But if you go on a Friday, Saturday, it's going to be pretty wild. Um, and uh, so expect to be to be um, exhausted when you're done. Uh, things you're also going to want to see in the city. You're going to want to go downtown, see the Capitol buildings and that stuff, the old uh, cathedral that, that partially fell down, maybe see Ruben Dario uh, National Theater. Although there's not much to see, you just kind of walk around outside unless you have like tickets to something. Um, and then Salvador Allende uh, Waterfront Park. You pay like a buck or two to get in, very cheap, but it's a very nice waterfront walk with restaurants and, and stuff there. There's plenty to do in Managua, but it's not tourist facing. So, uh, you know, as locals, if we want to go to a beautiful modern bowling alley, we want to go to video game arcades, we want to go to, um, you know, shopping malls and stuff like that, we go to Managua and lots of great restaurants. So no problem getting food, whether delivered or going out to eat, you should be fine. Uh, but finding things, getting around, it, it can be complicated and, and figuring out what you want to do and how you get from place to place. You'll spend a lot of your time in logistics and there just isn't a lot of tourist stuff to see. So if you've got time or you're really interested in the city, by all means, um, but uh, it, it isn't necessarily a place to, to make a point of spending on your vacation. Uh, Granada is generally three to four days. Most people are going to lean for three, but you're going to be pushing it a little bit. There is a lot to do. Uh, importantly, you've got the islands in the lake 
because Granada is a waterfront, but not oceanfront. It's, it's lakefront. Uh, so it's got the islands out there. That's really cool. It's got the city itself to explore. It's got a beautiful waterfront. It's got a beautiful pedestrian way. It's got the famous cathedral, lots of great churches, lots of architecture to explore, a number of museums around the city. So all that's going to keep you busy as you're in Granada. It has a local uh, Mombacho volcano that you can climb and it's like really cool uh, hiking up the volcano. Um, it's It's got a lot of uh, restaurants and not so much nightlife like going out and partying, but a lot of like going out in the evenings, maybe some music, maybe a trivia night, maybe just food and dessert and, and you know, walking. It's a much more relaxed uh, nighttime kind of place than a Managua or a Leon would be. Uh, but And Granada is very tourist facing, right? So there's lots of shopping. You could do like art. You could go to the plaza and shop for, you know, souvenirs. That's where you're likely going to want to get your souvenirs. Yeah, you'll pay extra, but it's, it's a big souvenir spot. Um, and so there's a lot of just exploring the city uh, that you can do in Granada. Um, and, and of course, the horse-drawn carriages absolutely do that. I don't know why anyone would skip it. It's cheap. It doesn't take that much time. And it, it's comfy and, and a lot of fun. And you get some good history. Just find someone who speaks English or if you speak Spanish, you're okay. While you're in the area of Granada, the other thing you have to see is Laguna de Apoyo. This is the lake, the volcanic lake, that is inside an erupted volcano's caldera. And it's, it's cold water. It is completely fresh. There's no uh, motorboats allowed on the lake. You're going to want to spend one night there. It's not a big thing. You're not going to spend a bunch of time during the day there. Um, a little bit. You want to be there in the light. You want to see it, but you also want to see the sun go down. You want to do a night on the, the laguna. You want to see the sun rise over the laguna. You want to do breakfast. And then you'll probably want to move on. It's like one of the most relaxing places in the world, but it's so beautiful that I cannot possibly describe it. And even if you're not into the beauty of it and you're not into the serenity of it, you should still be into the incredible uniqueness of a volcanic caldera holding a freshwater lake that you can go spend the night on. There's nothing Nothing quite like that. I do notice that the Sony really has a hard time with exposure and it's coming in and out. It definitely doesn't have the lock in the way that the that the Fuji does, but it's just not the not the same category, but it does have generally a good image and, I, and it is very handy to use. It's also very small. Uh, now, from Laguna de Apoyo, that sits in between Granada and Messiah. Messiah, you're probably only going to want to spend one day. You may not even want to spend the night there. You certainly can. Uh, but the big thing to do in Messiah is hitting the, the artisan's market, which is incredibly touristy, right? This is a market that is built just for tourists. So don't get all excited that this is like authentic market. It is not. Messiah does have one of the biggest, most important markets in the country, uh, probably the number two market, mar market um, Mercado Oriental in Managua is the biggest one, but it's also the scariest. Not that it's scary, like, come on, but it's, you know, it's a market, but uh, it is the place you're most likely to get lost, most likely to get pickpocketed, most likely to not figure out what you're doing, right? So Oriental is like overwhelming. Uh, Messiah is famous for how big its market is and all the things that it has and the artisans that are in it, but you don't actually go there. Tourists all go to the artisan market, which is a completely tourist-based, it's a Disney product, right? It's just this fake market just for tourists. But if you're looking for uh, souvenirs and all the kinds of things that tourists buy, that's where you buy them. Um, they're going to be higher prices than other places, but that's the attraction of Messiah is this, this market just for tourists. Uh, if you go to the real market, which is an unbelievably hard one to find, even the locals struggle to tell you where the market is. It's crazy. Uh, but if you find the actual market, it's mayhem. And it's a lot like Oriental. Um, and there's not going to be souvenir stuff. It's going to be all the daily stuff you need as someone who lives in Nicaragua. So it's uh, if you're interested culturally in seeing a real market. Messiah has that. Every city does. But if you're interested in all the souvenir stuff and the things that people talk about with Messiah, that's going to be the tourist attraction market. So that is uh, that is a big thing to do there. With Messiah, technically this is in Managua, but we're going to lump it with Messiah because that's where you do it from. From Messiah, uh, during the day you do the market. At night, you go to the volcano Messiah which technically sits in Managua, super confusing, I know. Uh, and from there, uh, you drive up to the top and you can see open lava. During the day, it's like kind of cool. You, what you want to do is do it at night. You got to be careful with the schedule. You can do it from Laguna de Apoyo. You can make it from Granada. You can make it from Managua, but Messiah is the closest. And, uh, and at night, it is glowing red lava all the time. Like it is seriously cool, well worth going to see. I highly recommend, highly recommend that. 
Um, also in the area, if you happen to have time and you're going by Nindiri, it's between uh, Messiah and the volcano, and it is a little dinosaur park uh, that you can, it's free, it's a city park, go in, and it's an absolutely beautiful little arboretum. And dinosaur park, it's worth seeing just a little piece of, of different Nicaragua. 20, 30 minutes is all you're going to need, but it's free. You can get some snacks there. It is a nice spot to get out and stretch your legs. Just past that on the left is some of the waterfront to the Lago Messiah, which is the small lake at the base of the volcano that sits, the city actually sits on one side of it and the volcano on the other. It's just very interesting. If you want to stop, there is like a pirate themed restaurant over there with views of the lake. I've heard it's not the best. I've never been, so I'm not saying, but it could be a good place to go and just have some nice views, get a snack, um, and check that out before heading onto the volcano or leaving the area. Before we go on too far, I want to mention the Corn Islands I'm not including on here. They are Caribbean islands. They are out in the Atlantic. You have to fly there or do some really complicated logistics. And the amount of time that you're going to want to spend on the Corn Islands is going to come down to how long do you want to sit on a Caribbean beach? Are you going to be bored after half a day? Then stay one day. Are you going to be like, I could stay here for months and just sit on the beach, then just however much time you want to spend. They are basically without attractions, just very small, beautiful Caribbean islands. So you can determine your amount of time for that. All right, let's dig into the really serious tourist destinations. There's two incredibly serious things that are basically nothing but tourists. Granada is the main tourist city, but it's also an operating city. San Juan del Sur was a small fishing village in the southwest corner of Nicaragua, very close to the Costa Rican border. It is now the major beach attraction for the country, and it really became the major beach uh, in the 1840s when it became famous as the transit spot for the 49ers in the American gold rush to California. Uh, that it's actually, this is where they came through primarily. So it's really important from, from that historic aspect and it's very cool. But now it's a fishing village that's turned into basically a big beach party, uh, which is very interesting. So how long do you want to spend there? I said two to three days, and generally that's what I like. Three days, you know, in a lot of these cases, when I say two to three, I'm going to lean towards the three because I want a full day without having to worry about come and go. But it depends how much time you have, of course. San Juan del Sur is mostly a beach party. You can go fishing from there. There's a few little attractions. There's the Statue of the Christ on the mountain you can go up and see. Um, you can do a lot of things from there. You could use it as a, b a base to go see the jungle, to go do surfing. You don't surf in San Juan itself, but you can surf in nearby beaches. Um, so a lot of that comes down to, do you want this extended vacation with San Juan as kind of a, a launching point? Then you're gonna need however much time you're gonna need. Last time I like did San Juan del Sur, I gave myself like eight days and that was pretty good. But we were doing a lot of extra things and a lot of exploring the town. Typically, you're going to want enough time to go out once or twice and like really go out drinking because that is what you do in San Juan. You're going to want to spend some of your days just lounging on the waterfront. You're going to explore the village a bit and check out some of the cool restaurants and, and shops and stuff because there is that stuff. And, uh, you know, there's some excursions and things you can do from there. So totally uh, give that a try. Um, so it is possible to spend more than just a, a handful of days there, but probably two to three days is mostly uh, what you're going to do there. The other major attraction spot that's super unique is the island of Ometepe. Now, this one takes a bit of logistics to get to and from, so that is where you can run into problems. Actually, being on the island is more or less easy. You have to take a ferry currently. Sometimes there's some options, but right now the only thing that there is as an option is a ferry from the port city of San Jorge. This is a suburb of Rivas, which is also the city that services San Juan del Sur, but none of these things are super close to each other. From San Jorge, you catch a ferry. You can put a car on it, but don't take a car to the island, please. Uh, go over to the island. Uh, you want to get off in Moyagalpa, not the other options. Moyagalpa is the main city. Uh, get off there. Um, you're going to want to arrange things ahead of time. Don't show up on the island and try to figure things out last second, you're trapped on a very small island. If things are full, you're screwed. If taxis aren't running, you're screwed. If restaurants aren't open, you're screwed. There's a lot to go wrong if you don't have anywhere to go. So make sure you have a hotel book to make sure you know what you're going to do. Make sure you have access to cash because we know people who've gone over and gotten stuck because they didn't have any cash with them and the ATMs went down. There are ATMs on the island. There is phone service. There is uh, internet. But you know, what if a storm hits? What if disaster strikes? You could be cut off and you want to make sure you have a little bit of preparation. So because it takes hours to get out to the island and you have to arrange things, you have to be at the port and then you had, it takes hours to get back. And in both cases, you're just in San Jorge, which is not a destination on its own. Although it is a pretty little village, you could stay there and it's cute, but it doesn't really have an attraction. I take that back. In the last year, they built a new Maricón in uh, San Jorge and it's beautiful. Do you want to spend much time there? 
I don't know. But <laughs> it is a really cute village, and they have added the Malikon. Uh, so going over to Ometepe, you definitely want to spend a night on the island. It is not worth going over and just turning around and coming back. I did that my first time. And at least I got to see it when I was on a really tight schedule. But the next time when I went back, I spent the night there, and that is so much better. You want to have, realistically, an entire day. So maybe go over in an afternoon, get to your hotel, get up and spend a whole day relaxing on the island. There aren't a lot of attractions. The island's about being super chill, very tranquilo, just have some drinks, enjoy the beaches, maybe do some hikes, maybe take a, a bicycle ride around the island to get a tour of the island. There are a few little things to see, but it's very minor. So one full day and then leave the next morning, just get on the ferry and go. That works out pretty great. Um, we've, we've done that and we're very happy with that. Could you spend a few more days? Of course you could. Some people move there, right? 50,000 people live on the island. There are plenty of restaurants to keep you busy with food. There's a lot of opportunity to walk. You could hike the volcanoes. There are things to do. Uh, Ojo de Agua uh, is the freshwater springs that everybody swims at. So there's plenty to keep you occupied, but for most people, you're not going to want to spend a lot of time on Ometepe. You're going to find it a little bit too chill, too relaxing, too tranquilo, and you'll be itching to move on to something else. So you know yourself, gauge what makes sense for you. But in general, I'm going to say two days given to Ometepe. All right, next up is our mountain city. So our main tourist destinations here are Esteli and Matagalpa. These are both moderate-sized cities up in the mountains. They're pretty far away from things. So for a lot of people, these aren't places you're likely to go because they're so far away. So just be aware that they may be a little bit too far away uh, and you they're, they're not so much on the tourist path. That's fine. Both of them are great places mostly to live, however. Cooler climate, so they can be really cool to check out. It is different than a lot of the rest of Nicaragua, so there can be really good reasons to want to go up there as a tourist, just to get a different idea of what Nicaragua can be like. If you do a lot of the other stuff, you're going to be mostly in the capital area, maybe in the capital south area, uh, which leaves you with a relatively small cross-section of, of Nicaraguan life. Obviously, the capital region has a lot of people, so you're getting a really good feel of what a lot of Nicaragua is like there. But the Riva zone with Ometepe and San Juan del Sur, not a lot of Nicaraguans actually live down there. It's the emptiest zone of, of main western Nicaragua. The autonomous regions out east are, have a, a lower population, but um, but, but out here, it's it's, it's definitely the, the least for this region. Um, so that's not really indicative of Nicaragua itself. It's great for a tourist destination. But if you want to explore Nicaragua, then, then the mountain zone has a very large percentage of the population, partially because that's where the really nice weather is. This is where uh, Nicaragua really has this glorious weather of year-round 70s and 80s, whereas down in the capital, it's 80s pushing into the 90s. And in Leon and Chinandega, it's almost the 90s year round. Not quite. We have a lot of days in the 80s, but it's still quite warm. So these mountain towns are very popular with large amounts of the population, both in the in the good sized cities, but also in small villages, uh, because the weather is just so beautiful. So these two cities are large enough that they have lots of resources. So either one, you're going to have plenty of sporting events to go to churches to check out businesses to explore things like coffee plantations, or uh, tobacco, uh, cigar rolling plants, or chocolate production, like that kind of stuff is gonna be all over the place up in the mountains. Plus, you're gonna have cafes and beautiful restaurants, live music, all kinds of of just normal everyday life events and the kind of stuff that you might be missing in Granada and the smaller cities because they're just there's just not that much going on and stuff that in Managua can be difficult to find because it's the big city and so sprawling so these cities could give you a really good chance to get a more accessible look at more common Nicaraguan life so you may really enjoy these um, but in both cases you don't have really strong tourist activities so generally I'm going to recommend two days and either one or the other if you're really looking for like tobacco rolling yeah you're going to lean towards Esteli you're really interested more like chocolate you're going to lean towards Matagalpa. And if you want the cafe culture, Matagalpa definitely has you there. But I would say that most people lean towards Esteli uh, as the more preferred location overall for tourists, partially because it's on the main road and it's much easier to get to. Matagalpa, not hard to get to and is my favorite city in the country. So obviously, soft spot in my heart for that. But uh, Madagalpa itself, the city is actually built in the mountains, whereas Esteli is high in the mountains, but it's on a flat area for the main part of the city itself. Madagalpa is the larger city, but more sprawling. Esteli is smaller, but more dense. So Esteli has the densest, uh, densest population in the country outside of the capital zone, but it competes with Managua. Masaya is actually the highest density within the country. So the mountain zone, chances are just like two days. If you really 
really interested in it, especially if you're looking at potentially living up there, then you're going to want to give it a lot more time. You may want to do two or three days in each of these cities, and you may want to add Hinotega to your, uh, your, your trek as well, especially it's really close to Madagalpa, uh, so often you'll combine it with that. The drive between Madagalpa and Hinotega being fantastic on its own, kind of worth doing. But Hinotega really doesn't have any spots for tourists in the city, so typically you're going to do that only if you're looking at living in the region, or if you live here, then of course you might go up there. Uh, Lago Apanas, which is the big reservoir up above the city, is beautiful, and it is a nice destination to go see. But it's generally not going to be on your tourist path, and it's outside the city, so I'm not including it here. But you could go there in Hinotega, and it is beautiful, uh, but much more likely you're going to go to Managua, uh, Madagalpa or Esteli. It is worth noting. Madagalpa does have Selva Negra just outside the city. That is the resort area, the Black Forest, and that is one of the best known and most popular tourist destinations for Nicaraguans themselves. Uh, and it is a place that a lot of foreigners would go to when visiting the country and gives you a completely different feel for the region. So that's something you may seriously want to check out. Our last city here is Leon, and that's where I am now. And realistically, here you're going to need three days. And there's a good reason why you need a little bit more time here than you would expect. And that is, one, we do have some cool stuff in the middle of the city. We're a colonial city like Granada, so we've got some cool neighborhoods to walk around, and we're very safe like Granada, so you can walk around very easily and just explore on your own. You can get walking tours, do all that kind of stuff. We have the cathedral like Granada. You got to see some of the churches. We got the big square like Granada. So a lot of things are copied from Granada. But unlike Granada, we have the museum. The uh, Ortiz Gurdian Museum here in Leon is the largest art museum in all of Central America. It's very important, and you want to spend a good portion of a day just doing that. And of course, you want to explore the city because it is a totally different style of uh, colonial city than you're getting, gonna get in Granada. Granada is an Andalusian modeled colonial city, and Leon is a more Castilian modeled colonial city. So just two very different colonial styles, but it's very interesting, and uh, you'll wanna see that. However, with Leon, you also definitely want to make sure that you are getting out to the beaches, because unlike everywhere else that we've talked about, this is unique in that we have a city that has beaches in the zone. San Juan del Sur, of course, beaches that you probably want to go see, very important beach area, but it's a beach area without a city, so it's a very different beach area. It has a large beach presence with nothing supporting it directly. Rivas is there, but it's quite some ways away. Leon has a very small beach presence because the city is so close that the beaches are roughly considered to be neighborhoods of the city. Technically, they are not, but in a practical sense, they are. They're, they're just part of the metro area, and the taxis and the local buses do regular circuits out there. So it's a totally different vibe than you're going to get in other parts of the country. Now, if you're here to see beaches, you're interested in like a hardcore beach vacation, that's a different video for sure, uh, and you'd want to explore a number of different beaches, some farther north, some in the middle of the country. But if you're only going to be doing basically city and, and core Nicaraguan experience, is than the two beach zones that you want to see. The San Juan del Sur for sure, that's your primary, and your secondary is going to be the Las Bonitas Ponaloya zone here in Leon. They're basically one big beach. They're just separated by a bunch of rocks, and uh, you know you can walk between them in five minutes. So that little zone just outside Leon is going to be your perfect spot for getting to see a northern beach. Uh, and, and that is a big area, right? The Not as big as San Juan del Sur by any stretch, but it's large enough that you may want to spend one or two days out on the beach. Some people will just want to come in for the day and go back to Leon, but some people are going to want to get a room and stay on the beach as well uh, and get to see, you know, sunrise, get the sunset, go to the parties at night on the beach. It's a completely different scene than in Leon. But now that brings up another point about Leon. Unlike all the other places we mentioned, except for Managua, you'll notice that in Managua we talked about nightlife. And while, yes, in Granada we talked about how there's not a nightlife, San Juan del Sur, yes, nightlife. Managua, there can be nightlife, but you've got to put some effort into it. And I'm really sorry for this unbelievable exposure problem that the Sony is having. It just can't handle this at all. Um, and uh, with Esteli and, and Madagalpa, there could be some nightlife. They definitely are places that have nightlife, but it's not a super strong uh, nightlife scene. Leon is one of the hardcore nightlife capitals of the country. San Juan del Sur definitely is, but but it's different. In San Juan del Sur, you have tourist nightlife. That is a huge backpacker party location. So you have a lot of 20-somethings who are there on a very strict budget and getting absolutely wasted, and there's basically no Nicaraguans. There are a few very, very few. So it's one type of scene. In Managua, you have essentially no foreigners. Very different type of scene, but it's the big city, so that's different. Leon is a smaller city and gives you a much 
larger scale and bigger going out scene per capita than I believe anywhere else in the country, at least anywhere that a tourist would go, uh, with relatively few tourists, but a few and a really large population of Nicaraguans who go out every night. There is dancing, there is drinking, there is live music, there is a number of events, uh, there's karaoke every night of the week. And so Leon is a place that if you're going to be here, you probably want to make an effort of going out. And in fact, if you're only going to go out in one city, then you're probably going to want to make that Leon. If you're going out a lot of places and you want to sample the nightlife throughout the country, absolutely. But if you're going to pick just one and you're like, I'm not a nightlife person, I'm not a going out dancing person, but I, I don't want to skip the Nicaraguan scene, then Leon is going to be your, your top choice. It has the biggest scene and, in reality, the safest. Um, Granada has very little scene. It's a little bit more dangerous because of the number of tourists. Managua, it's relatively safe, actually quite safe, but it is a huge city. It's a little bit more dangerous. San Juan del Sur is actually a little bit dangerous due to the number of backpackers. Being backpackers, they tend to bring a little bit of crime with them, and being such a, 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 com, a, a community of tourists in one spot, it it incites a lot of crime. It invites a lot of crime from uh, crimes of opportunity. So you do get in San Juan del Sur a level of crime you would not uh, normally associate with a, a small fishing village um, in the country. So that, that can be a little bit misleading and something you have to watch out for. It's still way safer than almost anywhere else you'll go. So this is very important. Nicaragua is incredibly safe. So that's not generally a big concern, but it is important to understand that some places are more dangerous than others. And people tend to think of Managua as being the dangerous place. And overall, it leans towards the more dangerous in the country. But San Juan del Sur is like that, whereas like Leon is incredibly safe. And Madagalpa and Esteli would be much closer to Leon. Granada is a little bit closer to San Juan del Sur. Basically, tourist and giant cities uh, engender a little bit of danger and farther flung less popular tourist destinations uh, with not quite as many people have a tendency to be safer. This is more or less universal. It plays out in Nicaragua just the same. But even the most dangerous places in Nicaragua are still safer than many of the, you know, safest places other places, right? It's it's a very safe country. So that is kind of my, my layout of the cities and where you're going to want to spend your time if you're a tourist in Nicaragua. Of course, if you're here for a lot more time, you can up all those numbers, kind of spread it around and get a little bit more relaxation in all those different places. Everywhere is beautiful. There's always a place to go. And there's a lot of places that aren't in cities that you may want to explore, like all the beaches I didn't mention, or Somoto Canyon in the north, where you can go and do whitewater rafting uh, in a canyon, or you can go out to the Caribbean coast and see towns like Bluefields, or go out to the Corn Islands, of course. Generally, you would fly from Managua. There's a lot to do in the country, and there's a lot of smaller cities that I didn't mention, like Boaco, or Huigalpa, or Hinotepe, Didiamba. There's a lot of beautiful places with different culture and different cultural activities. It's a very active country with a lot to do, so feel free to explore if you had months to spend here as a tourist, you have no intention of living here, but you want to just see the country, you want to keep touring around, there is a lot that you could fill your time with. But if you're on a tighter schedule and you're trying to figure out how to balance the time you have available to you, that is what I would spend in those cities if I was on a relatively tight schedule. And relatively tight being still, that's like two weeks, but spread out amongst those cities. So you could get a really good feel for Nicaragua. And it's worth pointing out, all of those destinations, you could very easily handle getting around to without having a car. You would not need to have a car, and you wouldn't need to get a car with a driver either. You could, that could be nice. But for the amount of time we're talking about, that would probably be, for most people, a little bit on the expensive side. But all of those locations, because they're cities, are accessible by bus and in the future train because uh, we have the new train coming in from Managua to Granada going through Messiah. So that's a whole zone that we know is going to be connected and other zones are in talks to possibly be connected in the more distant future. But if you're just going by the bus system, uh, San Juan del Sur is a little bit more difficult to deal with because it is so far away, but there are shuttles and stuff to go there. It's not too big of a problem. Uh, Esteli, really not too bad. Uh, Matagalpa, they are a little bit harder, just a little bit than the others because they're kind of off the main road, even though they're a big destination. Um, so if you're going going to be doing everything by bus. Madagalpa may be the one you give up and choose uh, Esteli instead. Hinotega definitely gets a lot harder if you're going by bus. So, uh, but Leon, Granada, Masaya, Managua, Esteli, Rivas, which connects you to San Jorge and the ferry to Ometepe. All of those are going to be very, very accessible by bus. You'll probably have to take the buses through Managua. It's a central hub. The only time of all those that you wouldn't is making the connection between Leon and Esteli could be done directly. Um, there is a bus that runs between them. 
And other than that, you basically just go through Managua, use either the Uka buses, once in a while something separate, and uh, if you uh, you do switch to a different bus system to go to Rivas and San Jorge to go to Ometepe, but not a big deal. You can ask around or we could have a, a channel guide on that as well. Uh, but those, those are benefits to this kind of system. If you're going up to Somoto Canyon and stuff like that, then the bus system becomes really problematic. Not problematic, it becomes very difficult, very confusing and, and challenging, and you don't know how to put things together. When you're going to these other cities, you're always in places where there's hotels and restaurants and services very easy for you to get to. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That is like Patreon. It comes directly to me and helps make everything we do possible. Helps pay for the air conditioning on days that are 99 degrees and I need to hide inside. Uh, I will actually be going out here in just a few minutes, but it is hot. Tell your friends about the show. Post on social media. Go watch an extra episode at the end of this one, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And right now, there's some other videos like on the screen. Just click on one of those and watch one an old episode.